Hi, my name is Christoph Hammer. I would like to show you today how you can easily set up a ThinPrint environment, including a central print server. First, we have to download the software from the download area of the ThinPrint website. So let me go ahead and go there www.thimprint.com and you see the download now button up there. Just register here and you get the link for the software via email. Um, you can also switch your language up here, um, but for this video I will stick to English. After you receive the download link, download the Thimprint 10.6 bundle installer. I already did that here, um, just extract it on the server. And it basically contains uh, all the pieces we need. So there are a couple of folders. Um, the most important one here is the Thimprint Engine 10 x64 folder. It contains everything we need for the installation. So we have all the quick installation manuals here. Um, if you want to have a quick look on, on, on how to get this going on your own. And it also contains the actual software. Now we're going ahead and just start the setup Thimprint 10 complete x64 executable. Now I recommend that you read the quick start guide. It, it contains a little bit of additional information um, like the uh, accounts that you need to set up the license server installation, things like that. Um, just make sure that you read this before you actually continue with the installation. Thimprint 10 and, and higher is using a license server. So that is the first part that we need to install the Quartado license server. The first piece we install here is a license server readiness check to make sure that all the requirements are met and to make sure that the installation has a fair chance of succeeding. Now when all of these buttons turn up green, that means everything is okay and the actual installation can start. Just click on next, accept the license agreement. and select the folder you want to install it in, and then you're basically done. All the rest is done automatically until the very end of the license server installation. While this is ongoing, let me explain a little bit about the license server. Um, Thimprint is based on named users, named Active Directory users. So the license server needs to be able to import these users from the Active Directory and we're using the Active Directory lightweight services to do so. So we have to make sure that the uh, account that you use to install this software is able to read uh, the user objects in Active Directory from the OUs that contain these users. Now the Active Directory lightweight directory services are installed automatically here with the installation, so you don't have to do that before running the installer. Okay, and the last thing in the installation of the license server is to select either the demo mode, which gives you 10 users for 30 days without limitations, or enter the license keys that you already purchased um, and basically skip the demo mode of this uh, installation. Whatever mode you, you select, after you hit finish, it automatically opens a website um, to the actual license server, to license dashboard, and that's what we're going to see here. The simplest thing is to simply log on with the same account that you used for the installation of the license server and you will be greeted by a dashboard. Okay, right, we see we have 10 free licenses on the left side and it's about four weeks until these licenses expire, so everything looks good. And we can move on to actually install the Thimprint engine. Now the Thimprint engine can be installed on the same server as the license server, but it can also be installed on a separate server. For this demo, I decided to install that on a separate server, so we are going to switch over here to my print server. Okay, so this is my print server. And we want to install the Thimprint engine on an existing print server with the goal to virtualize the printer drivers to make sure that these printer drivers don't get copied by Microsoft to all the different uh, desktop platforms that you might be using, like a terminal server or a physical desktop or hosted desktop. So we have three printer queues already installed here from different vendors, a little bit of variety here. And you can see the actual printer drivers also a variety. Now, normally when users would start using these printers, they would copy these drivers over. And the goal of this installation will be to virtualize these drivers so that all the users use a universal interface, a universal driver, instead of these individual native manufacturer drivers. The installation of the Thimprint engine is fully automated. So like for the uh, license server, we're using the same bundle installer, but instead of selecting the option for the license server, we just select the option install Thimprint engine. Again, we can pick a language for our Thimprint engine and then follow the prompts of the installation here. 
So click next first, then accept the license agreement. And after that you will be asked what role you want to install. Now there are a couple of different roles that you can install the Thimprint engine in and you will see here terminal server, print server, terminal server extension. This is a print server so we definitely want to print via this print server so we're selecting the second option print server. So select the option, just click next. Also select the folder you would like the installation to copy files in and then just click install and the rest is done automatically. Okay, and we're done with it. Now after the installation is done of the engine, we highly recommend to restart your system to make sure that all the uh, changes that we made actually become effective and that there are no problems. So I just restarted my computer here, um, I'm logging on again and after you log on again you see under the app management of Windows there is now an option, uh, multiple different apps and one of them is the Thinprint configuration app and let's just click on that one first. Um, this is basically the app where all the configuration for the Thimprint engine is done. Um, we see that here on the left side there are a couple of different um, categories or areas that we can configure. The one that we are interested here for isolating the printer drivers uh, to virtualize the printer driver is the vLayer section. So what vLayer does, it reads the information that it, of the drivers of the printers that are currently installed. And you see that here we got our HP, our Konica, our Rico, and under model you see that it's using the HP, Konica, and the PCL6 universal driver um, for these printer queues. What we want to do, we want to make sure is that users get the same driver for all of these printers and not have different printers for different printer queues, different drivers for different printer queues. So it's a very simple way to enable that. We just select the queues we want to isolate or virtualize. We right click on it and say enable vLayer. We're being asked if we want to still share the native printer objects. This is sometimes useful, but in most situations we don't want to do that. So I'm clicking on no here as well. And then automatically the vLayering process starts as you can see here. Now as soon as that is done, I will show you what exactly happened on this system. And I will do that by opening the printers folder um, that basically comes with Windows, so the print manager from Windows. Okay, vLayering is done. The icon here changed in the front to an orange and the names changed a little bit as well. You see there's now an underscore N behind the native printer object um, and you see on the model it says now TP output gateway. So now these printer queues are printing with their native drivers and render the job but the user will see a universal printer driver, the Thimprint output gateway. And we see that here when we go to printers, basically every printer queue has doubled. Um, the original printer queue, the one with the manufacturer driver, with the native printer driver, um, received the underscore n underscore uh, addition to the name. And that is basically the, the queue with the native printer driver. And we paired each of these queues with a Thinprint Output Gateway driver queue, um, which had the same name or has now the same name as the other queue had before. And when we look at the properties of that Thimprint Output Gateway queue, so the new queue that the user will be picking up uh, when they pick up shares, it has now the share name that the other queue had before, and it imported all the different properties, the public properties of this printer queue. And at the same time, we stopped sharing on the native printer queue. We renamed it, we stopped the sharing here. Um, so users will not pick up this queue anymore. So let's have a look at the actual preferences, so the actual settings for this print job, uh, for this printer queue. And uh, we imported all the printer sizes, we imported the uh, paper sources, so we pre pretty much imported all the public properties. And on top of that, simple output gate, we can also support stapling, punching, binding, and multiple printers per sheet, uh, multiple pages per sheet. Okay, and that completes the installation of the print server and the virtualization of these printer queues. Now, the next thing I would like to do is show you how that actually impacts the user, how that affects the user. So I'm going to log on to a terminal server here with my user one account, just as a regular user, and pick up a printer share. So I'm opening the printers folder here, devices and printers, and just go to the and just go to the add printer uh, option. And here I just select the printer that I virtualized from the print server. So backslash backslash name of the print server backslash share name. And as you can see, even though we're using a Thimprint Output Gateway object, it is still a regular Microsoft Printer queue. So you can do whatever you can do with the Microsoft Printer queue. You can still do with the Thimprint Output Gateway driver queue. 
Okay, there's our printer object here. And let's have a look at the properties. We see it's the same interface that we saw on the print server. It's that universal interface of the ThinPrint Output Gateway. So if you had like 50 or 100 different printer queues with different drivers, the only printer driver you would need to deploy to these machines, to so this desktop, for example, is the ThinPrint Output Gateway driver. That's it. During the last part of this demo here, I will uh, show you how you can automate the printer assignment. So we just did here manually by going to add printers and selecting the queue. Usually we don't want that. Users just should have the right printer based on where they come from, where they are, uh, what their devices, things like that. And we have a technology that can be used on the Windows workstation or on a terminal server, for example, or hosted desktop. And based on the location of the user, based on the name of the user and a few other criteria, we will then make sure the right printer share is mapped into this user's desktop. And uh, we will use a, a terminal server here as an example um, and basically show you how you can use the ThinPrint AutoConnect service um, to automatically connect to printer shares that are hosted on this print server, including the ones we just virtualized. Okay, so let me log on to my terminal server here. And I'm logging on as an administrator because we have to install a software component here as well. And you might already have guessed that we can use exactly the same installer we used for the license server or we used for the print server. Um, so we just go to the same bundle installer and just start it up again. Now we're done with the license server. We're done with the ThinPrint engine for print server. But now we want to install a comp ThinPrint engine component on this terminal server. So we're uh, clicking on the install ThinPrint engine option again. And we've already seen this one. Click next. Agree to the license agreement. Um, here, however, we have to look at the different options again. So we have a terminal server and we have terminal server extensions as possible options. So what is the difference between those two? The terminal server is a full engine and you can use it with or without a print server. So if you want to print directly to local printers on a Mac OS, for example, as a workstation, you could use the terminal server engine. However, if your printing is focused around a print server, then the terminal server extension would install a few, a uh, little bit fewer compu uh, components. So only the, the components that are absolutely needed to interact with that print server would get installed. So in the scenario that we have here, the terminal server extensions are perfectly fine. However, the terminal server role would include every component that the terminal server extension has. So you could select that one as well. Just choose the folder or the path you would like to install this component in. And after the installation is done, a reboot of the terminal server is required as well, as we saw before on the print server. Okay, we we'll restart it. And now we have to configure which printer actually shows up for which user. And we do that again by opening the ThinPrint configuration app. Now this one looks almost the same as it did on the print server. Um, however, in this case, what we want to look at is the AutoConnect section. The one at the bottom here. AutoConnect is a service that runs every time a user logs onto a session or reconnects to a session um, or logs onto a workstation. Um, and it goes through two tables, the dynamic printer matrix table and the map additional printers table. Dynamic printer matrix table makes sure that a printer is created inside that user session that corresponds to a printer locally configured on the user's workstation. So if I got my MacBook and I got a printer connected directly to the Mac and I connect to a terminal server, this uh, dynamic printer matrix table makes sure that this local USB printer shows up inside my session. I can just hit print and print back to it. The map additional printers table is used independently from any locally configured printers. So that would be the one to just pick up a printer share based on the username or the group membership of the user or based on the IP range or the client name of the device from which the user connects to or connects from. Um, in the end, the target is the piece where you specify which network share, which printer share you actually want to have mapped here for this user. So let's just pick a target uh, that we just virtualized from our print server. You can either type it like this here, or you can also uh, use the Windows uh, printer search GUI um, to have all the printers that are published uh, listed and then select from that list basically. Now, this is the target. And as I, as I mentioned, you can specify filters here. You can say, well, only if this user is a member of this group or if the user has this name um, or if the user is a member of this group and comes from within this IP range, only then this target should be mapped. 
So it's a very so simple process. All of these filters, all of these rules have to apply, and then the target will be mapped into that user's session. And just to complete this step here, um, I will save these changes, this configuration, and log on as a user to the same terminal server and basically show you how easy it is for the user to have access to the right printer. So let me close that here and let me log out of this terminal server and then log on as a user. So we're back on my, my desktop here and I'm starting the terminal server client or the remote desktop client and reconnect to the t same terminal server that I just configured. As I said before, the TP Auto Connect service um, recognizes that the user is logging in and it's going through these two tables or it goes through these two tables, the map additional printer table um, and the dynamic printer matrix table. And it finds there is a rule asterisk for the name of the user, um, asterisk for the um, uh, network from which the user comes from and for the client name that the user uses to connect. And the target was the HP printer. And that's the printer we see here and is already mapped um, It happens instantaneously during the logon. And you can see this is in one of these virtualized printers that we set up initially on that centralized print server. Okay, and that basically completes my, my little demo here. Um, as you could see, um, we install the license server first, we install the central print server second, then we virtualize these printer queues, and then we install the thin print uh, terminal server extensions on our terminal server and configure the TP Auto Connect table to make sure that the right printer queues are available for the right users. It's really that simple, can be done within 20 to 30 minutes, and you get a working thin print environment. Thank you very much.